Um, in studio right now, uh, I had you guys, I had your names and I've lost them. Uh, good morning. How are you guys? Uh, give me your names. If we're nice and tight on the, uh, on the mics, if you could. We're all over the place today. It's been a crazy day. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, uh, first name? Virginia. Virginia and? Bill. Bill. Okay. Uh, Jake Wish. And you guys live off the Creek Road in Mohawk? Yes. So, okay. What's the story? What happened here? There's a, there's a, you're, you're going against the, the, the town. Yes. And they want to shut down a project, or is this an existing uh, mobile home park? It's an existing mobile home park. It's been in existence since 1963. We've okay. owned it since 1992. And they want it shut down. Yes. Is it the flood issue? Is that the problem? Well, that's what started it. Yeah. Yes. How do you shut down? All right. I'll tell your story so we can understand what's going on here. Well, we had flooding after the 2013 flood. Um, we immediately started to clean up, repair, and so forth because we had to. Yeah. And we had six families put out because of it. And after we started repairing, they said we had to have floodplain development permits because we're in a floodplain. We didn't at first think we had to. We never had to have per, uh, permits, but they wouldn't issue us our operating permits or anything, our wow. uh, building permits. So we then did all that. We And every time we've is, um, issued or, or sent in a building permit or a floodplain development permit, they've denied it for reasons they want us to do more and more and more as far as heck So raising. are there, there are people living there now? Yes. Okay. We have six families. So what happens to those people with this plan? Everybody's got to move? That's what they're saying. Yes. Yeah. Bill? Yes. Well, yeah, that's what their, <clears throat> you know, their ploy is that uh, they came through. What happens is immediately after that flood, and as you know, the whole valley, I mean, everybody yeah. suffered significant damage. But it was a, this was a unique flood. This yes. was not something that happens every year. Very much so. Yeah. And... Uh, so, you know, I mean, a lot of people were displaced, and there's still, you know, vacant houses all over, you know, mm -hmm. Mohawk and all over yep. the areas and stuff. Uh, and in our case here, what they did, there's been, you know, they've been studying this creek after the 2006, well, the whole general area, uh, after the 2006 flood. And they come out with these preliminary maps in 2011. And based on these preliminary maps, uh, they show that one unit out of the seven in the in the Creekside Park there uh is in the floodway. The floodway meaning that it is the creek itself, the channel. Yeah. Uh, we question this very much so because the thing of it is, is the maps, the 2011 maps are preliminary. And there's a comments and appeals period. And there's a 90 day wait. And this has to be brought out and viewed so that the public and anybody involved in this, you know, can raise concerns and questions sure. on the discrepancies. Yeah. And on the map, it says that these maps are not to be used for accuracy. Well, our town, this, this gets to be a personal uh, issue. The highway, uh, the town of German Flats uh, supervisor lives directly across the road from us. That no matter where we go, we get confronted by people. And like I say, I can honestly when say When you say this. personal, you think that it's personal between you and, and him? Uh, people come up to us and tell us this. Yeah. And, you know, through conversation and stuff. And uh, this has been, you know, we've had all operating permits since 1992. We have to have a New York State Health Department permit. We're inspected by them. We have to have a New York State permit. And we have to have a town of German Flats Highway operating permit. We have been given these every year, never any violations. Up into after the 2013 flood here, uh, we proceeded to go ahead. There was no help for landlords, as everybody knows. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, so it was, and there was no. And funding. even the help for the uh, the, the residents. I've, I spoke with a resident just the other day. Yes, they still haven't uh, been bought out. They still haven't no. had the relief that they were supposed to get. So you know, we continue. You know, uh, the landlords got nothing. No, right, right. So you know, we continue to work on you know pick up and go and and start working on the structure. You know, we got flooded at our own home, mm -hmm. and uh, you live on the Creek Road. We live area? on the Creek Road, just up okay. above. Uh, the, the, the trailer the park. park. Okay. And uh, so, you know, from the time we got our own home straightened out and everything, and then we went down there and proceeded to start work, then we started getting, uh, you know, stop work orders, et cetera, and everything, and claiming that we were in a floodplain, you know, area there. Well, the thing of it is, is uh, this has not been designated. Okay. And we had special meetings with the town's attorney, which was a confidential meeting, as they called it. And we met with our attorney, Mark Wilbur, and 
and Mark had asked, what, what do we have to do to resolve this situation? Yeah. And their words were, there is no resolution, period. I am here to close with an injunction to close the park. What does this do for the community? Right. You're talking six families that, number one, is we pay taxes onto it. We'd be glad to have anybody go and look at that park. It's an asset to the community. Yeah. Uh, these people shop locally. These people uh, pay their own electric and utilities. We pay the water. We pay the taxes on it. These people support the area, cable TV, direct TV, whatever. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this is a big impact. We're Not to mention that this is your business. And this is, yes, this yeah. is, you know, a business for us as well. And, uh, but, you know, this is, how do we, you know, with a, you know, with a declining population and not having things in the area and stuff, and with all the foreclosures on all these homes and stuff, where does this tax burden fall? Right. Where's this impact going to be? So you, you said six families currently live there? Yes, they do. And I don't want to make something out of this if there isn't something there, but clarify again the personal, that that this person you mentioned doesn't, what did you say it was the highway superintendent? Supervisor. Er, supervisor. supervisor. Doesn't want to, he personally doesn't want to live across from a trailer park or he has there was a falling out with the two of you. We found out later on, after we bought the park, that he had intended to buy it. But the previous owner wouldn't sell it to him because they had issues. So you feel there's a personal, there Absolutely. is a, a, a personal issue, not just personally with you, but a personal issue on the park for this, this uh, town supervisor. Yes, because so far nobody has been able to tell us what's unsafe about it. Yeah, we have right. really... All right, um, and what is his name, by the way? The supervisor? Yeah. Frank Spato. Oh, it's Frank Spato. Got it. So a big name down in the uh, down in the valley. Uh, John in New Hartford is on right now. John, go ahead. Yeah, I just listen in quick. I'm not a legal analyst or anything, but here's my take on it. Um, you have to get a FEMA-designated flood certification. Uh, you can go on the FEMA.gov website, and you can get a permit, tax, or fulfilled flood map. Of where you live, and that'll show you the uh, actual flood plain you live in, the site, the map, the date of the map, and the uh, flood plain number, a uh, designation. It's either an A, an X, a P. Uh, so you can go on FEMA.gov, you can get all that. Um, or, I mean, here's the deal if you're not in a flood plain, uh, a, a, a supervisor or a town can want all they want, but unless it's them in the domain, there's no way they. Unless the health department shuts you down because of septic concerns or uh, well and septic, uh, if you pass all that, if, if you're not in a floodplain, they can want all they want. But there's no way they're going to be able to shut you down just because they want to. you got to, yeah. uh, unless it's them in a domain, they're putting in a highway or something. That's totally different. But, right, right. You know, if they have a personal vendetta against somebody, oh, I don't like that. I'm the supervisor. I don't like that person over there. I'm going to shut them down. I'm going to pull my political strings. That doesn't fly. It does, you know, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but I do have some experience in this stuff. And yeah, John, if they were on a if they were on a floodplain, could they be shut down for that reason? No, not really. It takes a long time. Look what's happening in Oneida. Now right. even in Mohawk, they want to. There's 14 properties in Mohawk that because of the flood, it's in a floodplain. They want to buy them out. It's a long process. And in Oneida, um, city of Oneida, some of it is. There's only a little bit that's in Oneida County, mostly it's in Madison County. There's like 300 houses that have gotten flooded out several times that have seen the designated flood zone, uh, and all those people have to be displaced. I mean, we're 300 houses, and a lot of them are multifamily houses, two right, right. or four units. Yep. The same thing. These are the people's livelihood. They own multiples of these houses, and they're only going to buy them out for market value plus a little. They're not going to give them loss of income so everybody loses on this deal right but if they're if they're in a floodplain and fema comes in and says i don't there's no way fema's going to come in and say we want to buy out this mobile home park for six mobile homes there's no way fema's going to do that they're going it has to be something bigger right right um, right you know the thing is if they're in a flood zone and the health department says well yeah it is a hazard because of septic pollution that's totally different. But if they're they had a clean bill of health to the health department, then they got a good case to, to fight right. this. You know, there's got to be a lawyer out there who will do something pro bono on this because this is this isn't right. All right, John. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the advice. Thanks. Sure. There, you have a question for John? Oh, Hold no, on. No, there's just two points that I'd like to make Go on ahead. that. John is that number one is that uh, 
one of our tenants went to acquire, uh, we have, you know, re, you know, researched a lot of this. One of our tenants actually went to acquire floodplain, you know, flood insurance. And, you know, she gave her address of the mobile home park and they had punched this in. And now this, all of this is done by FEMA and the, the firm maps, flood insurance rate maps. And she does not qualify for flood insurance for the very simple fact that the map depicts that she is not in a flood prone or floodplain area. And this is one of the units. And this park is contained on less than three quarters of an acre, uh, very small. And secondly, the mobile home, manufactured mobile homes can be put into a flood prone area. What they have to do is you have to have a technical evaluation. They have to meet certain criteria by FEMA. And we do have all the FEMA guidelines and these mobile homes, manufactured homes, have been set to these guidelines. And basically what they have to do is allow, they have to be set two feet above base flood elevations. Uh, they have to be tied down to, you know, stringent standards and stuff and meet particular codes. And they have to allow flood waters to come in underneath and uh, not raise the base flood elevation level and stuff. And these have all been done. And the problem that we have is they refuse because they're still standing on the point that, uh, based on these preliminary maps, they refuse to come in and inspect these homes and to see if they even qualify, hmm. you know, to these who's, standards. Who's they refuse? Well, this is the town of German Flats and the codes officer. Okay. All right. So here's what I'd like to uh, to do with this. We're going to reach out to Frank Spot and let's get him on the air tomorrow and uh, you guys on the air and let's see what we can we can get to the bottom of here. We tomorrow. have a public hearing tomorrow morning. You do in the morning at nine o'clock at okay. the town hall in uh, German Flats Town Got Hall it. on East Main Street in Mohawk. So we will be there at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. If and, and that is a public hearing that is going to basically, uh, will you you plan to learn from here or get public support? It's a yeah, public support because okay. they're denying our floodplain permit. It's, Got it. And that's what we're going on the denial. That's why the hearing is. And, and that's tomorrow at um, nine where? o'clock, nine a.m. at the German Flats Town Hall, East Main Street, in Mohawk. Mohawk. Yep. All right. And, okay, but we will reach out to Frank. Maybe we can get him on the air tomorrow. And um, and you guys certainly have the opportunity to call in during that. All right. Okay. See what we can find out. I uh, got a break. Hold tight at WIBX.